scriptures uh when you're born again you you supposed to get born again to enter under god's rule now let's go back and talk about this a little bit more i, I um i believe sometimes we uh in ephesians 2 8 by grace are we saved through faith and that none of ourselves it is the gift of god not by works least any man should boast so you know god don't ever want us boasting about how great we be and he always want us boasting about how great he is and then our, our faith is believing and speaking what he said and then our, the action of our faith is to do what Jesus tells us to do so it really really if people really get taught properly get taught right really everybody's problem is hearing what Jesus said believing and speaking what Jesus said and then doing what Jesus tell them to do. Everybody's problem is, is, is hearing and believing and acting upon the word. Now you, you don't have another problem. Everything you going through, Jesus is the answer. And um, and so we, we, we need to understand uh, that when, when you get saved, it is to come under God's rule. It is to come under the Lord Jesus telling us what to do. Um, Jesus said here in John 14, verse 25, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me and hate not his father <clears throat> and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and your own life also, he put your own life also, not just everybody else, but even you. He said, you can't be my disciple. So you got, you got people that say they're born again, they go to church, and they're not even a disciple of Jesus Christ. Let, let me tell you something Jesus told me. If a person hates sin, hates what they do, and hates where they keep falling, and it really despises it, hates it, the Lord will always hold people like that up. Uh, it's, it's when you, you love what it is. You don't despise it. And so Jesus said, you can't follow me if you're not going to put me first. Uh, uh, and, and when Jesus is first, you always run to him. Now, I teach him at the church because the Lord Jesus told me uh, when, when I started Jesus as a church, I've been full time in the ministry. Uh, uh, for years, since 1989. And the Lord uh, told me three things when I started the church in 2000. He said, I, I want you to, to put in every message how I love on the cross. He said, secondly, I, I want you to teach my people to always come to me and never you first. I just had a member call me the other day and, and asked me, uh, uh, you know, that they had a problem and, and could I help them? And I said, well, have you talked to Jesus about it? They said, well, no. I said, well, I'm not going to help and, um, I, I, and I said, don't you, they, they, what have you been doing in church? Ain't you been listening to anything? Now you know, they've been there for some years. The baby Christian, I wouldn't have done like that. But I would have taught them. They wouldn't have done that no more. And I said, um, he, he said, oh, yeah, 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 you have said that, ain't you? Go to Jesus first. See, they can't even be a disciple. Uh, and there will be taught to be there when you run to people all the time by promise, they'll run into the Lord. 
and asking him. Then he might lead you to come to me. Or he just could tell you. Amen. And and um and so you you you'll never follow Jesus when when you uh are uh, 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 seeking men, seeking what they think, and and, and uh, not seeking Christ. And then let Jesus lead you to go to your pastor. Let Jesus lead you to, to, to get godly counsel. But you saw him first. And and so uh, I asked him, well, what have you been doing? And he said, yeah, I remember you saying that. See, Jesus told me to make sure that they come to him first. And teach him. I teach him to do that. And then he said, second, I always remember that these are my people. And so, you know, when they when they don't act right, I say, Lord, your, your people ain't acting right. See, I go back and tell them. And I make sure that I love his people and, and treat them exactly the way he would. And I rebuke them the way he would rebuke them. And I love them the way he loved them. And I, I cherish them the way he cherished them. And I look after them the same way he look after them, see? As, as they, I know they belong to him. Hallelujah. Now, uh, so so without you putting Jesus first, without you coming under his roof, see, then um, you you never develop as a Christian. See, another thing Jesus said in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I love you. And see, you get born again to become a disciple of Christ, to become a follower of Jesus Christ. You, you don't get born again uh, and, and, and keep on thinking and doing what you want. You get born again to come under Jesus' rule. A lot of times when you find people that go to church that struggle all the time, this, this, this is the problem. It's who's ruling it. If you can get Jesus to rule them, you'll get every one of those problems, those addictions, those habits, uh, those weaknesses. You'll get every one of them out of their life if they learn to let Jesus rule them. Let him rule. Let him dominate them. And and, uh, and he'll come through. He'll begin to show them uh, that they, they, they need to obey him. They need to obey him. Anytime we come to Jesus, we need to hear what he say and then do what he tell us to do. That's our victory. That's our victory every single day. Now on the back of here, we, we talked about how to come into the kingdom. See, and, and how to, uh, let, let me go back to Acts 26, verse 18. I, I want to go back and read uh, some, some translations. Verse uh Chapter 26 and verse 20. Let me let me read a couple of uh, different translations. Uh, uh, um, let's go to this one. Uh, Paul was writing here to the church about the message that Jesus gave him for people to come into the kingdom. Now, let, let me read it in the King James. It says uh, that, that they should repent. See, that that's repent to God now. And tell God you're sorry how you live. And 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 turn to God. See, turn to to do what He tell you to do. And that Jesus. And uh, and then do works meet. For repentance. Now that's a little bland in the King James. But let me read you this. Uh, in the um, contemporary English version, it says, Stop sinning and turn to God, then prove what you have done by the way you live. See? And, um, uh, you know, it, it, it should show. Now, now, I, 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 now this, this ain't bad. But I cursed. After I got saved, four months after I was saved, I said a word that, that I didn't have no business say. I said, oh, forgive me, Lord Jesus. I'm a Christian. I said, we don't talk like that. And then two months later, I, 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 I said it again. Got around the wrong people. 
and I hadn't got my mind renewed. And so, let's listen to this. The second time I cursed, I asked the Lord Jesus, watch, watch now, Pastor what would you, I believed in him. Why? He rules me. When he don't rule you, you don't think like this. <clears throat> you, you just know. When he rules you, this is how you think. I said, Lord Jesus, will you change me when I never curse again, never curse since? Never curse since. Um, see, listen, you, you might say he, he can do it, but show me what you say he can do it. I'll show you he can do it, but he done it in my life. See, <clears throat> a lot of people with faith will say, oh, I know he can. <clears throat> but show me your faith without your works, without him doing it. I'll show you my faith by how he do it. See, any area that you believe who Jesus is, the one sent from God with no sin, Jesus took your sins away on the cross. Anyone. Who, who repents and really turns to, to let Jesus rule them. Number one, they're going to abide in Jesus. He, that's, that's, he's ruling you. He's, he's telling you what to do. You're abiding in him. You, <clears throat> when you abide in Jesus, here's, here's one of the, 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 the revelations that people get that people go to church don't get. They just go to church. But but his people who go to church, who Jesus rules every day, they 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 is that they understand. I understand that I can do nothing without him. So so that's always driving me to to do what he say because I know how I live without him and, and now I know how I live with him. And living with him is way better. I know that if I do what I want, if I want what I want and do what I want, I'm going to fail. If I do what Jesus say, then I'll have his success and the kingdom of God and the blessing of God and the life of God and the power of God will work in my life every day. And so uh, here... Paul said, stop sinning, turn to God, then prove what you have done by the way you live. See, do, do you prove by the way you live? Huh? Let me get a couple more translations. Contemporary English. Let me read this one. Uh, yeah, that, that will say the same thing. Let me get another one. Um, oh, English standard. I like this one. It says that they should repent and turn to God performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. See, you should be living a life daily that's keeping with you repenting. You turn from the way you used to live. Amen. Let's go down um, God's Word translation. It says, uh, both groups, the Jews and Gentiles, were expected to change the way they thought and acted and turn to God. I told them to do these things that prove they had changed their lives. This is the way you come into the kingdom. Is there's a repentance to God where you have turned. Because listen, saints, that's the reason that God sent Jesus was to bless us. You read this in Acts 3, uh, verse, uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 26. It says, unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. See, so God's love. Is is what he did in Jesus. You, you, you can't you can't get God to love you no more than God's already loved you. You you can't get Jesus to do something else for you that he ain't already did. 
So what he came to do in loving us is to turn us from our inequities. And these preachers are lying and telling you that God loves you no matter how you are. No, he loves you no matter how you are to turn you from that, to turn you from doubt, to turn you from fear, to turn you from caring, to turn you from worrying, to turn you from the works and evil in this world. He, he said in Galatians 1.4, let me read you this. Uh, we have to stay with the word. You know, I had a preacher say that 1 John chapter 1 was wrote to agnostics. That, that you're not supposed to confess your sins. That that was wrote to sinners. That God already done forgave us. And that, that God has done forgave us in Christ, but that don't mean you've accepted it. And that don't mean that you're living in it every day. And, and so uh, here's my question to him and them who believe that lie. And it's a doctrine of devils. My question to them is, when can I read that that was wrote to agnostics? And why did Jesus tell the church in Revelation, why did he tell them that they had to repent because they left their first love? Why did he tell them they're already forgiven of that? And what they want me to do is believe what they say. And when you believe what men say, and it, it ain't read, it ain't wrote, it ain't said that this was wrote to and no agnostics. Then I got to believe what men say instead of the word of the living God. And I'm telling you all, Jesus told me in a voice from heaven. They don't have no voice from heaven. Jesus told me back in 1988, he, when I got condemned, when I see it for the first time after three months, and Jesus told me after three days of being beat up by the devil, he said, the first time you asked me, I forgave and forgot. Woo, glory to God. That's the word that lands up with the word, confess your sin. They're misleading people with their own doctrine of devils that don't line up with the word. And they're hurting people because you don't have to respect God and reverence him when you can see it and don't have to repent. When you know Jesus told you don't do that and you don't have to be sorry for that. And sure, the forgiveness has been accomplished on the cross, but you got to take it off the cross and carry your cross and deny yourself. And you got to let Jesus forgive you and cleanse your conscience so that the sin you just committed won't rule and dominate you. Hallelujah. And so people today, these, these people uh, teaching this stuff, and, and they're misleading God's people. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God. Listen, it's power when somebody repents. It's power when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares. What if, if, if he's done everything, why you got to cast all your cares? And Jesus told me that. If he's already done everything and this teaching is right, that you don't have to confess your sins and 1 John chapter 1 was wrote to sinners, then we could just go and say any chapter we want in here is wrote to sinners if we don't want to live it to make our doctrine right. Man, which, what other chapter you say ain't for us? I mean, they pick us. Let everybody pick a chapter out and say, well, this ain't for the Lord. This ain't for us. Where can I read that chapter was wrote to sinners? And I'm going to tell you this here, saints, by the spirit of the living God, that it is very confusing for the apostle John to write a letter, a letter, and then the first chapter, it wrote to sinners, and the rest of it wrote to Christians. Come on, John, if you've done that, you have confused the daylights out of me. And then I would like to read where you tell me that chapter is wrote to agnostics. Please let me read that. Because I, I can't follow man. I must follow the word. And Jesus said out his own lips. His lips. If you don't repent, you're going to all perish. 
And I'm telling you, people are believing these lies. And Jesus said, all y'all going to go to hell if you don't repent. Repent to God. Turn. So that's not condemnation. Say that the truth. Condemnation is when you tell people they're wrong and you don't give them the cross and the blood to bring them out. That's condemnation. You'll never get condemnation in Jesus because he died for you and took your sins away. For you to repent and turn and receive forgiveness that you don't walk like that. No more. Oh, did Jesus didn't die on the cross Thanks for you and I to keep living in darkness. He died on the cross for us to be free. To live in liberty. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. First Galatians 6, I mean chapter 1, verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and of our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So Jesus didn't die for us to stay in bondage, to stay broke, to stay sick, to stay bound, to stay in fear, to stay in bondage. He came to set us free. And the provision has been made. The Lord told me this the other day. He said, if I, if I died and I took your sins away and you don't have to confess your sins to receive forgiveness, Again, he said, that, why don't you just have wisdom about everything? What, why James say, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give him liberty. I mean, wouldn't you just already have that? Why would James say, if any man sick among you, let him call for the elder church? Why, why ain't you just already healed? Why do you have to use your faith to pray for those things and when it comes to forgiveness, you ain't got to pray? It's just a doctrine of devils. And in, 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 in Timothy, uh, uh, 2 Timothy 4.1, it said, the Spirit speaketh expressly in the latter days that some are going to depart from doing, hearing and doing what Jesus said, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And I think people just like that they ain't got to repent. They like hearing that. Because they got itching ears. And they want to hear something that makes them feel good. Instead of the truth that requires you to live by faith. And to humble yourself and be obedient to what the Lord tells us to do. First John chapter 1 is straight from God. And it's for Christians. And I'm going to tell you why it's for Christians. Listen carefully at what the Lord taught me. The Lord Jesus. Not man. Listen at this. If we confess our sins. See, it could be more than one. He is faithful and just to forgive us. And to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. He keeps you in a righteous. See, your spirit ain't singing. He ain't repenting of nothing to real you. It's repenting for what your soul and body do. Because you've been forgiven in Jesus in your spirit. But you have to live that out. Listen carefully at this as I get ready to close. As a sinner, Jew, Gentile, you cannot confess all your sins. And that ain't even the gospel to preach for people to confess their sins because they've already been forgiven. Even the sinner's already been forgiven. He's only guilty of one sin, and that's rejecting the Lord Jesus, not believing on him. John 16, verse 9. How in the world could you? Now listen. Confess every sin you done did to get saved. John couldn't have been writing that to sinners because a sinner can't remember everything he done did wrong. I don't care who he is. I'd have still been repenting today. It, it don't make sense. 
This is for Christians because once we walk with Jesus and Jesus teach us, we know when we come short and not done something he said do or we said something or did something we didn't have no We know what it is. And how many of you all out there done had to do it more than once in a day? Ooh, I, I, how about a bunch of times in a Yeah, years ago. And so, saints, you, you got to, you got to, listen, listen, I want to close with this today. I beg of you to stay with the word, stay with the New Testament, stay with the gospels, stay with the letters, stay with his apostles. Don't let man bring you teachings that you can't read with two or three witnesses where the Lord said it. Amen. How to get free and stay free. This is a new series, six tapes, six CD series on the screen. It's our address. We have all of these saints. I'm telling you, give these to somebody. Well, especially listen at them yourself. On the screen is our address for love gift of $30 or more. If you ask me, I'll send you a free copy of my book, The Believer's Guide to Christ. Every one of y'all that order this series, I'm going to send you this book free. It'll bless you. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus and some ministries. Post Office Box 292 112 Nashville, Tennessee 37229. And saints, I, I, I'm telling you, well, as much as, as, as uh, the church really got blessed and got changed hearing these, and they will bless your life. Also, you can order on robberscapeministries.org and you can go to land and use your credit card or debit card online. And I know you'll be blessed. Also, I want to invite uh, you to Jesus as a church. Saints, a church that's alive. It's worth the drag. And so come out service times on the screen. You can call our church number at 615-237-9802. And um, or you can go online to robinscareministry.org. Thank you uh, so much. And, and, and make sure you come up and shake my hand. You, you'll be so blessed coming. And I want to thank all my friends and all my partners. Thank you. You know, Saints, uh, it takes finances to be on TV, and thank you for helping me. Thank you for, I know many of you all who watch me every day. Every day, we're on every morning. We're on every day. I, I know you all uh, are being blessed. I stay with the word. I stay with what Jesus taught, what Jesus said, what Jesus did. And so I just ask you all to pray and seek the Lord to help me. Amen. To keep getting the truth out. Praise the Lord. And I, I love you all so much. I'm praying for you all. And I, I, I know that God is will continually richly bless you. <clears throat> Amen. Also, you go to robscareministry.org and you can give with your credit card online. Well, my friend, for you, if you know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with the fullness of God for Jesus as miss our past Rob Remember that as he loved you, go live that love. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Yeah.